boy Paso. What a good doggy. Yes, you are. You're a good doggy, Pablo. I don't care what the neighborhood dogs say. You're the best dog in the neighborhood. Yes, you are. Love it, Pablo. All right, looks like we're on good. I'm just doing a Friday night live stream. I like doing live streams. They're fun. So yes, you are. You're today I want to do a What do I want to do here today? Um, I'm worried about. Uh, I, I'm I'm worried about deep. I'm worried about the economy. Not gonna lie. I know I did a video yesterday saying I'm bullish on stocks. I am. Hey Mary, Mary Mo, I haven't seen you around here. Um, and I want to go around the world and look at deflation that's happening across the world, and I. I uh, I just, I'm worried. No other way around that. That, And I'm worried for the short term. In the long term, I'm not. I think stocks are absolutely the way to go. I'm not saying get out of stocks at all. I am 100% bullish on stocks. I, and it, I, There's no other way around that. But when I look at the situation that we're dealing with today, it's uh, it's freaking nuts, man. And um, this has nothing, I, mean, I guess, a little bit to do with Sniffy Joe, uh, but mostly has to do with the world and the dealing with uh, COVID-19. And the facts, in my opinion, no, I can't say the facts, that this has been uh, forecast and planned from, you know, from the big get-go uh, to make uh, the world recharge, to build back better in a way that's, uh, that's not geared towards your individual liberty. It's just not. It's geared towards making um, the, the globalist even more elite. And anyway, so I see that. Hey, Patty, happy Friday to you too. And I say, what does this mean? Um, what's happening? Because this is insane what they're doing with these second lockdowns. I, I mean, I'm, yeah, I heard freaking stupid Fauci today saying people just need to obey. I, I, can you know, I just, I, it's, it boggles my flipping mind. Um, it, it, and I'm sitting there thinking, this is crazy. We got uh, Mike DeWine, even uh, that guy, he's a Republican in a strong red state saying that uh we're uh, just uh, all kinds of stuff and we have no the mass mandates haven't done work and uh, haven't, haven't worked the lockdowns haven't worked but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter because the the vast majority of people who are going to die from COVID 19 have already died it doesn't matter um i i tell you bob it's 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 crazy it's so but they want to lock us down again and again and again and again because they need more time to get the uh the bill back better Uh, it's it's frankly scary, man. It's frankly scary. So let's say a quick prayer, Father, Son. I'm going to start saying prayers every time I do a live stream now because it helps me to stay focused on upstairs. The only thing that truly matters. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we just pray. We pray for the strength and the courage to know you are always in charge. And our we are just pittance. We are just pittance. You run everything. You run the show. Thy will will be done. It might not be the way we want it, but thy will will be done. And just give us the patience, the intestinal fortitude, and frankly, just give us the ability to be humble and say, you are in charge. And just to bow before your power and your presence, knowing that you want a relationship with us and you love us. You will never let us hang. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so let's. Uh, <clears throat> I gotta say my I say my prayers all the time. I say prayers a lot. Prayers what keep you focused on the important thing. Uh, for me, um, anyway. So what I want to do is I want to dive into uh, trading economics. Um, uh, let's see, so this one here. Amen. Right on, Patty. Amen. Amen. For sure. God is good. God is good always. All right. So uh, let's, I was, my man, um, Jason from Fighting Words Financial. I'm a huge, I love Jason Proctor. He's a great guy. I subscribe to his channel, Fighting Words Financial. He and I were tra tra uh, trading text the other day. Um, and he said, uh, <laughs> 
and he's not a stupid guy, Jason, but he says something that scared the hell out of me, man. He said, we need an option for a technocratic temporary government. And I, I said, what? I said, you serious? He goes, Europe screw, he says, Europe screw things up frequently. Every decade or so, every country has a nine to 12 month period where a government made up of economists is elected. They spend a nine to 12 months uh, doing very unpopular, fiscally responsible things. Every, everyone calls them names and then boasts them out, but magically leaves all their very responsible and very unpopular fiscally conservative policies in place. Uh, we don't have that option, he says. And I said, hell no. I said, I'll follow Bill Buckley's model every day of the year. I'd rather be governed by the first 200 names in the Boston phone book than the faculty at Harvard. And I said, your faith in economics is frightening. And I talked about Michael Edison. Michael and Edison and I are working on another debate about post-election stuff. Um, he's a big lib, but he's, and I said, he's effing on it, because he is. Michael Edison re recognizes the economists don't know what the hell to talk about. And neither do, uh, 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 and the same Nassim, uh, uh, Nicholas, Nassim Nicholas Taleb says the same thing. Um, anyway, so I gave him uh, an email to check out from Nassim about uh, intellectuals yet idiots. And I'll just read some of this. This is an excerpt from, uh, from his uh, book, Skin in the Game, which you should get, Skin in the Game. What we've been seeing, world, this is from 2016, what we've been seeing worldwide from India to the UK to the US is the rebellion against the inner circle of no skin in the game policymaking clerks and journalist insiders. Now, this is before the Trumps are won, all right, in 2016, but this is after Brexit. That class of paternalistic, let me actually, I'll just put this and we'll come back to this in just a second. That class of paternalistic semi-intellectual experts with some Ivy League, Oxford, Cambridge, or similar label-driven education who are telling the rest of us, A, what to do, two, what to think, uh, what to eat, how to think, how to speak, and who to vote for. And I you know, uh, send you to Fauci today who said, you just need to obey, and Fauci can kiss my big fat behind. But the problem is the one-eyed fall on the blind. The one-eyed fall on the blind. These self-described members of intellectia, intel, intel, intelligentsia, can't find a coconut in Coconut Island, meaning they aren't intelligent enough to define intelligence, hence fall into circularities. But their main skill is capacity to pass exams written by people like them. With psychology papers replicating less than 40% dietary advice, reversing after 30 years of fat phobia, macroeconomic analysis working worse than astrology, the appointment of Bernanke who is less inclusive of the risks and pharmaceutical trials repl replicating best at best only one third of the time, people are perfectly entitled to rely on their own ancestral instinct, instinct and to listen to their grandmothers or, mon uh, or such filtered classical knowledge, Montagne, with a better track record than these policy making goons. So he's see what he's saying? So listen to grandma, as opposed to the Ivy League credential. Indeed, one can see how these ac academic bureaucrats who feel entitled to run our lives, Fauci, aren't even rigorous, whether in medical statistics or policymaking. They can't tell science from scientism, exactly. In fact, in their eyes, scientism looks more scientific than real science. For instance, <coughs> it is trivial to show the following. Much of what the Cass, Sunstein, Richard Thaler types, uh, those who want to nudge us into some behavior, i.e. we're going to automatically enroll in a 401k and whatnot, much of what they would classify as rational or irrational comes from their misunderstanding of probability theory and cosmetic use of first order models. They're also prone to making the uh, mistake, the ensemble for the linear aggregation of its components that we saw in the chapter extending, uh, extend, talk about the mind, were ruled by the minority, not the minority skin color, but by the, the, the lab mouse, the minority. The intellectual yet idiot is the production of modernity, hence he has been accelerating since the mid 20th century to reach his local super and bum, super and bum today, along with a broad category of people without skin in the game uh, who have been invading many walks of life. And if you think about what's going on today in America in a world eyed over, it's be socialize the risk, but be privatized the profits. So we have a group up here. Uh, did you see what Deutsche Bank is now saying? Talk about socializing the risks and privatizing the profits that we should tax work from home people. Freaking nuts. That's just the, the banks, the banksters, man, the banksters. Uh, I want to talk about that in just a second. All right. Uh, uh, let's see what we, wait, hold on a second. Yeah, it, 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 to reach this local, okay. 
Uh, without Okay, so the broad category of people without skin in the game who have been dating many walks of life. Why? Simply, in most countries, the government role is between five and ten times what it was a century ago, expressed as a percentage of GDP. The intellectual yet idiotic seems ubiquitous in our lives, but still is a small minority and is rarely seen outside specialized outlets, think tanks, the media, and universities. Most people have proper jobs, and there are not many openings for the IYI, the intellectually idiotic. Beware the semi-erudite who thinks he's an erudite, who fails to naturally detect sophistry. The intellectually idiotic pathologic pathologizes, pathologizes others for doing things he doesn't understand without ever realizing it is his understanding that may be limited. He thinks people should act according to their best interests, and he knows their interests, particularly if they're rednecks or English non chris bowel class who voted for Brexit. When plebeians do something that makes sense to them, but not to him, the IYI uses the term uneducated. I, I get that all the time on my YouTube channel. What we generally call participation in the pro political process, he calls by two distinct designations. Democracy, when it fits him, and populism when the plebeians dare voting in a way that contradicts his preferences. While rich people believe in one tax dollar, one vote, more humanist, humanistic ones in one man, one vote, Monsanto in one lobbyist, one vote, the IYI believe in one Ivy League degree, one vote, with some equivalents for foreign elite schools and PhDs as they are definitely needed in the club. More socially, the IYI subscribes to the New Yorker. <laughs> he never curses on Twitter. He speaks of equality of races and economic equality, but never went out drinking with a minority cab driver. Again, no real skin in the game as a concept is foreign to him. Those in the UK have been taken for a ride by Tony Blair. The modern IYI has attended more than one TEDx talks in, his, in person, watched more than two TED talks on YouTube. Not only will he vote for Hillary Monsanto Malmaison, because she seems electable in some, uh, in some such circular reasoning, but holds that anyone who doesn't do so is mentally ill. We can put Sniffy Joe in there now, or a freaking Kami Kamala. The IYI has a copy of the first hardback edition of the Black Swan on his shelves, but mistakes absence of evidence for evidence of absence. He believes that GMOs are science, that technology is not different from conventional breeding as a result of his readiness to confuse science with scientism. Typically, he gets the first order of logic right, but not the second order. Hot, uh, but not second order effects make him totally incomp incompetent in complex domains. In the comfort of a suburban home with two car garage, he advocated the removal of Gaddafi because he was a dictator, not realizing that removals have consequences. Recall, they has no skin in the game. He cannot pay. He will not pay for his consequences. I.e., Bill Crystal. The IYI has been wrong historically on Stalinism, Maoism, GMOs, Iraq, Libya, Syria, lobotomies, urban planning, low carbohydrate diets, gym machines, behaviorism, trans fast, Freudianism, portfolio theory, linear regression, Gaussianism, salif Salafism, dynamic, stoastic, stochastic equilibrium modeling, housing projects, selfish gene, Bernie Madoff, pre blow up, pre blow up, and p values. But he's convinced that his current position is right. The IYI is a member of a club to get traveling privileges. If social scientist, he uses statistics without knowing they, how they are derived, like Steve Panker and psycho, psycho loke fasters in general. When in the UK, he goes to literary festivals, he drinks red wine with steak, never white. He used to believe that fat was harmful, and now he's completely reversed. He takes statins, statins because the doctor told him to do so. He fails to understand ergodicity, and when, ex I don't even know what that is, when I explain to him, he forgets about it sooner. If for soon. He doesn't use, use Yiddish words even when talking business. He studies grammar before speaking a language. He has a cousin who worked with someone who knows the queen. He's never read Frederick Dard, a bunch of people I've never heard of. Uh, he has never got drunk of Russians. He never drank to the point where one starts breaking glasses. He doesn't even know the difference between Hecate, and I don't know what that is. We basically can't tell crap for Chinola. He doesn't know that there's no difference between pseudo intellectual and intellectual in the absence of skin in the game has mentioned quantum mechanics at least twice in the past five years in conversations that have nothing to do with physics. He knows at one point in time what his words or actions are doing to his reputation, but a much easier marker. He doesn't even deadlift. <laughs> Anyways, that's uh, Nassim Nicholas Taleb. And I'm just sitting there thinking, yeah, Biden doesn't know what the hell he's doing. 
Kamal, she look, I mean, my goodness, man. It, it's crazy. These I got a guy on YouTube today saying Reagan gave had CIA give drugs to minority neighborhoods. I'm like, dude, that's freaking 40 years ago. Kamal and Biden put a hell of a lot more freaking innocent black people in jail than freaking Trump could even dream about. And Trump is apparently is a Nazi white supremacist. It's crazy. But anyway, these intellectuals are chomping at the bit, man. They're chomping. They're chomping. They know they got the world in the grass. All that was sitting between them was Brexit, Boris Johnson, and Trump. That's it. Boris Johnson, they got him by freaking – because Boris Johnson was a greenie. He was. That's the issue. If you go green, you're, you're never coming back because a greenie's got you. Once you go green, you're done. You're done. It, it's – once you go green, you're done. And so Boris Johnson, he was a greenie, but he took a stand against Brexit because he saw the tea leaves and uh, it was a good move. But not, but now he's got full throttle lockdown crap because that's the way to re-engineer the, the economy that the globalists want, which is, uh, which is inherently deflationary. And we're going to talk about that here in a little bit to show you what's going on right now across the world. And America's going to go the same thing, man. We're going the same way. It's a re-engineering where they're going to have less and less people working more and more ubi is coming there's no way around that <clears throat> you're gonna have less opportunity to do things to move less opportunity to do transportation more you have to pass tests in terms of oh you got your papers more just top-down authority and you will obey to the fauci's he just said it today what did i say and what did he said i posted that too so what did fauci say here um Fauci said, oh, maybe I didn't post it. I thought I did. I don't know where I posted it. But anyway, Fauci said something about, uh, you will obey. We need you to obey. You will obey. And it's, uh, these people are freaking nuts, man. And Fau look, Fauci was like, freaking four, eight, a buck ten. I mean, come on, Fauci, tell me to obey to my face there, big guy. You see what I'm saying? I mean, that's the thing. They don't. They don't. Robert Reich with his truth and reconciliation, they don't. But they have the means to tell you what to do, and they have the means to restructure the economy the way they want, which is big green, big watermelons, where they give you, they basically, they deny you your right to run a business. That's what's happening right now. They're denying the people the rights to run a business or to frequent a business. They're doing that as we sit here. And they're doing it under this thing called COVID-19, which is insane. It's insane. I get if you want to say it in April, that's fine. It's freaking November. Wake up. It's November. And they're doing this again and again and again because they didn't make it painful enough the first time. But they did enough to make it so Trump could lose. I, again, as a pessimist from Maine, I think he probably will. I hope he comes back third party. It actually occurred to me, uh, I was talking to this guy from Texas today, is uh, very enlightening. He said, look, Josh, you don't understand. People down here, they're fired up. They're, he's in East Texas. They're fired up, man. They are fired up. And I said, that's a good thing. So we know that a lot of people just aren't going to back down. The Million MAGA March tomorrow, I don't know who's going to be. I hope the people be there. Uh, my man, Austin Foreman, who did the uh, – Pallets full of ballot song. He's going to be there to sing. And I hope, I, I mean, I hope there's going to be a freaking an army of people up there. The MAGA army. But the MAGA army isn't Republican. It's certainly not Democrat. And so what uh, What my guy is saying is, hey, he hopes Trump runs third party in 2024 because Republicans are nowhere to be found. My wife told me about Nikki Haley. Well, she, at least she posted something today that Twitter banned her, but they won't ban the, the, is the Iran government saying there's no such thing as a Holocaust. I said, well, that's great that Nikki Haley's making a stink that they banned her, but what the bother stink about banning the freaking president of the United States? So the third part would be good. Now, a lot of people say they'll split the Republicans kind of like a Ross Perot. I don't know. I don't know if I believe that. I don't know if I believe that. Um, I think, if anything, it might uh, take a lot of the, uh, the left populists to join us on the right populism. Because right now is is corporatism against the world. The Deutsche Bank talking about tax and work from home. It's just this thing is just crazy. And Deutsche Bank, they just got bailed out by the German government. It's just crazy. It's the big risks. Of the bit we are socializing the risks. That means the, the CEOs and all the guys at Deutsche Bank will always get money, get bank, uh, the, and they're privatizing profits because we'll always make it happen. 
All right, so let's go into uh, the, the issue on deflation because I think this can't be overlooked or not enough. Um, deflation is here essentially worldwide. And if we look at this is from trading economics, um, you can see the US economy, a consumer confidence disappoints, so that's not shocking. Uh, but let's go down here. Um, so here is inflation rate, all right? Here's jobless rate. Here's interest rate. So if I may, the old days of the economic model, which is what scared me about my man, Jason, the Phillips curve, the old day of low inflation, uh, 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 low joblessness, high inflation, um, you had high interest rates, the whole thing. It's just, it's completely, the economics, economics departments just don't know what the hell they're talking. They don't know what they're doing any more than the polling firms do. It's complete, it's complete and utter astrology there's no other way around that they have no clue what they're doing and i forgot who said it maybe it's Ian paul samuelson who i'm not a big fan of but he might have been said economics is the one uh profession that makes astrology look good it might have been free but i don't know but anyway so let's go to inflation we're just gonna click on this you can see hong kong negative 2.2 ireland negative 1.5 spain negative 8.8 israel switzerland thailand euro area the euro area, point negative, point three. Uh, we go down to Italy, negative, negative, Taiwan, Germany, negative, Japan, zero. And if we go over here to GDP, debt to GDP, so Japan's got no inflation rate. Japan's got no, uh, basically, full employment. They got debt to GDP through the, through the roof. So you can see no inflation, negative interest rates, freaking uh, jobless rates of uh, full employment, debt to GDP, uh, a, a, a freaking over 200%. And yet, look at this. Growth year over year, not negative nine. Growth quarter over quarter, negative seven. Interest rates and negative interest rates territory with no inflation, low jobless rates. So the idea of low jobless rates inherently mean high inflation and high interest rates. It just hasn't been there for years in Japan. But it's not just Japan anymore. Now we've got Euro area. GDP year over year, negative four. Now you can attribute that to COVID, but they're going through another lockdown. Uh, on a jobless rate, it's almost by design, 8.3, uh, because the more people out of work, the more they rely on the government, the more the government gets relied on, the more government can dictate to you how you live your life. Um, you, even that, a debt to GDP, I mean, 84% is still high debt relative to GDP. And yet, look at that. I mean, here's Italy, debt to GDP. So you think high debt to GDP, high debt to GDP, that's got to mean interest rates are through the roof. Nope. Here's Italy, negative interest or zero interest rates. Again, we already talked about Japan. Here's Singapore. Uh, Singapore. I mean, this Singapore, eight tenths of eight basis points is their interest rates. Uh, freak unemployment, 3.6. Debt to GDP, 126, which is higher than us. I mean, look at all this. This is GDP year over year, over year. France, negative. Singapore, South Korea, Finland, Denmark, Sweden. China's commie, so throw that with Canada. Look at that. Freaking debt to GDP, 89. Interest rates, a quarter of 1%. Inflation at one half 1%. I mean, just this is, remember, this is the inflation right here. I mean, look at this. It's crazy. I mean, look at that. It goes all the way down here before we get to 1%, which is US, 1.2. And here's our debt to GDP, 106.9. People are freaking out, once we go above 100, oh my goodness, the dollar is going to collapse. Negative 2.9 GDP year over year. Now we have a slowing economy right now, by the way. It's starting to slow. The third quarter was insane. 33% was the third quarter. It's starting to slow. It's starting to slow. Is that a large dead cap bounce? I'm starting to think so. Anyway, so what you're seeing here is GDP year over year. I mean, look at this. I mean, so here's Israel, here's Switzerland, here's the Europe area, here's Ireland. You know what I'm saying? So even in the uh, the third quarter, a quarter over quarter, like the U.S., we had 33 percent increase. Here's Canada, negative 11. When apparently we were back in, we we're back in the saddle again. Here's the U.K. Well, they had a good one, but they're locking down again too. Here's Austria. They had a good one, but look at their freaking inflation rate uh, right there. That's the interest rate. There's inflation one and a half. I mean, so inflation across the developed Western world is less than two. Here's Chile, three. Well, Poland, that's you know, essentially we, we consider that an emerging market. Brazil, Russia, Mexico, Egypt. I mean, look at that. 
Even Mexico at 4.09, run by a socialist. And uh, what's his name? Um, AMLO. I just, there you go. I mean, <laughs> look at this. This this is freaking negative until here with Japan zero. And then we go all the way down here to the US 1.2. Over more than half of the countries have inflation of zero or negative or less than uh, 1%. Interest rates, we don't get, let's go to interest rates now. Interest rates, Switzerland is crazy, look at this. We don't get, when do we get to 1% interest rates? We gotta go all the way down here to Saudi Arabia for heaven's sake. Even Chile, 0. 0.5, Thailand, 0. 0.5. Any Romania's emerging company, a country in the Europe? Colombia, Philippines, South Africa, China, India, I mean, there is nothing, I mean, the Western world in the developed market has interest rates across the board, about 0% or negative. And here's the U.S. at 25 basis points. It's crazy. If the Fed is going to have that low of, that loose of an interest rate policy and we're not getting inflation, what does that mean, man? What does that mean? And, and on top of that, we're going into a, I want to. See, I don't know if it's gone here. I forgot where it was. Uh, consumer comp. There's something else I was reading today. Uh, dollar depreciate. Okay, that's not big enough. Anyway, so let's just go back to Japan again, and we're going to go to government bond. Um, I want to go to. Hold on, just a second. I want to go. Is it money? I can't remember where I want to go. Uh, is it? I think it's money. Good boy, Pablo. All right, so right here, they're going back to 2000, and here's Japan again. You, I mean, look, it's zero. Negative interest rates for the last four years, zero for the last basically 10. What's up, dog? Come here. You want to sit with me? You want to come say hi to everybody? Come here. Come here, Pablo. Yeah, a little bit of a bump up right there, but you can, I mean, look at that. that that's not, that is not a sign of a growing economy by any stretch of the imagination. Good boy, Pablo. All right, so what is, I mean, <laughs> let's look at the U.S. Because we're the best. We're going to go to money. Good boy. Uh, right here, money. Interest rates. And again, the same for us. I mean, the Fed gets involved a little bit, you know, this stepping stone, whatever. But I mean, we're, we're staying down here for a long time. And the idea that the debt is going to make us go hyper, it's, it's, it's just stupid. It's just dumb. It's not happening. So the low inflation are uh, is here to stay for a long time, especially in consolidation of employment because of the, the desire to have people out of work especially of the desire to shut down small entrepreneurs, have people work from home, have people uh, rely more and more on the government, uh, then never mind the machines anyway. I mean, that's always going to be deflationary. Anyway, and then on top of that, just whatever the hell is going to happen with the lockdown, uh, part two, part three. I mean, who knows? You think the government's going to lose its grasp? What are they going to do next time? Because we just sat there like sheep. What are they going to do next time? You think they're just going to say, oh, no, that's cool. Now I see the, the Mississippi governor saying, we're not going to abide by a lockdown. Oh, great there, lady. What the hell were you, was I think it's a woman. Uh, that That's great now, but uh, it, <laughs> that ship has already sailed, sister. Because when Joe Biden comes and says, you will lock down, or else you're not getting money for transportation, money for Medicaid, this, you, what are you going to do? You're going to capitulate. Because the federal government controls all the purse strings. That, this, this is going to happen. So you can talk a big game. I'm looking for my own governor. Where the hell is Brian Kemp? Where the hell is he during this freaking stealing of the election for, in Fulton County? Nowhere to be found. Now we got a guy, our Secretary of State, trying to grab his kahuna saying, if you come down to in Georgia and vote, uh, you're, you're going to be subject to uh, 20 years in prison. I'm like, all right, yeah, okay, buddy. That's the, uh, I'm scared of that because you've never done crap to stop the fraud and voting up to this point. So all of a sudden, out of nowhere, if we find that you voted fraudulently in this election, you're going to set subject to somebody for 20 years in prison? Yeah, give me a friggin' break, dude. 
How are you going to prove that they're a big guy? How are you going to prove it? Because you can't, apparently you can't prove nothing else. The whole thing is it's just we're it's being freaking it's just it's bad, man. No other way around. Now again, this might sound opposite where I'm optimistic. I'm completely optimistic about stocks. But I'm not optimistic for the short term. And so I had a guy, I think his name's Ernie, email me today. He goes, look, I'm getting ready to dump 300000 in Wellington. What do you think? And I told him, like I'm telling everybody, I've been saying it for help six months now. I said, I would wait until, um, uh, until at least spring. I'd wait till last spring. We got to see what happens with the second lockdown. And uh, with Europe going insane again, uh, with Biden coming in and going to make everybody shut down, with Biden's advisors are being just clowns, clown centrals, and no one's going to challenge these guys because they hate Trump so much. They just, I mean, literally, you could put a freaking ham sandwich in the White House and they'll be like, thank you, ham sandwich, you saved us. It, it just is, in my opinion, is going to get ugly. I don't know if that means stocks will get ugly. I am still fully in stocks. I got a thing here. Um, if you ever smoked, you still always get a, you, you need to have something in your finger. I haven't literally smoked a cigarette in probably 15 years. But you, if you ever smoked, you always got used to having something in your fingers. You know what I'm saying? And so I always have a pen or something like that. And, you know, I, I probably should have been a drummer in a different life because I'm so hyper. I can keep a beat. But uh, anyway, that's why you just got a screwdriver. Put that down. Um, oh, look what I'm drinking, by the way. Ooh. Duty, loyalty, honesty, courage. Where's that from? The Secret Service. Someone sent this to me today. I'm going to protect Joe Biden because I'm going to the Secret Service. I think the Secret Service would have me. No. All right. So what am I saying here? All right. So I am. I still need my income. That's for sure. So I'm still plugging away, plugging away, plugging away, plugging away into VTI. Every two weeks, I plug away a good amount of money every two weeks. Um, I, I just want to re revisit that cash is still a beautiful, beautiful thing. I want to revisit that cash in a deflationary low inflation is still a good thing. Now, this is going to sound odd because I also think the worst thing you could have in a deflationary uh, environment is debt. Remember, the debtor gets killed in inflation. The borrower loves inflation because inflation eats away at the cost of the debt each and every year. All right. The debtor, the person who loans the money as such, loses value each and every year. If you think about it, you bought a house and uh, $200,000 and uh, right now. All right. You're paying on that, it'd be about a thousand bucks a month. Yeah, about a thousand bucks a month. All right, you fast forward until, if we'll just say 30 years. Do I get my calculator? Uh, man, where did I do my calculator? I looked out there. Hey, we'll just say that that thousand dollars, the house is now worth 40, 400,000 bucks. All right, just for simplicity. And the new debt on a $400,000 house would cost $4,000, 2,000 bucks, 2,000 bucks. So everything's the same. The house went from two hundred to four hundred thousand bucks. Your your mortgage is a thousand bucks a month, right? But the new house is four hundred thousand bucks a month, and the the mortgage you get now would be two thousand four hundred thousand dollars in total. But the mortgage you get now would be two thousand, which means you are getting as you're paying that mortgage off. You're getting the prices from years gone by. It's like you're being able to buy. Remember the old days, you could buy a can of Pepsi for 25 cents. You remember that? You go down the Phoenix market on Peak Sound, buy a can of Pepsi for 25. We used to have Moxie in Maine. I don't know if they still do. You buy a can of Moxie, which is actually nasty, for 25 cents. You remember that? You can't buy that can of Moxie anymore. But what if you were able to lock in the price of a can of Moxie from 30 years ago and you're still paying for it? Does that make sense? That's where a debtor gets killed, uh, the, the person who loans money gets killed uh, by inflation because he is getting yesterday's and yesterday's and yesterday's prices while the prices keep going up. And yet the, 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 the I guess a debtor is the piece of person that borrows the money, the lender. So the blender gets killed. The debtor, me, I'm like, man, I'm paying, here it is year 25. I'm still paying prices from 25 years ago on that mortgage. So the lender loves inflation. You just counterintuitively if it's in deflation the exact opposite 
The lenders love it because what happens is that thousand dollars on deflation that you're paying that's locked in was only able to buy a thousand bucks before, but now I can buy eleven hundred. Now I can buy twelve hundred. Now I can buy thirteen hundred. And inflation, that thousand dollars can only buy nine hundred, eight hundred, seven hundred. And deflation, that thousand bucks can buy more. And inflation, the thousand bucks can buy less. The price of the dollar drops in inflation. And deflation, the price of the dollar goes up. And as such, if we have deflation and the price of goods are going down, then whatever is fixed retains inherently more value. I could buy a thousand bucks with this money I got in the bank account. Um, it, I got a thousand bucks. It could buy me a thousand dollars worth of goods. Next year, that same thousand bucks, I got no interest. But the same thousand bucks can buy me nine, it can buy me 1100 worth of goods. I made 10% on that money, on the purchasing power of that money because of deflation. I didn't make any interest. It doesn't matter <clears throat> because the price of goods dropped. The value of that thousand dollars is worth the, whatever the change of the price of goods was. In this case, just use that. So I got a thousand bucks. I got a thousand dollars at the bank. Get me a big fat goose egg of interest. A year from now, that thousand bucks can buy me eleven hundred dollars worth of goods. That means I made ten percent purchasing power increase, even though the actual value of the dollar didn't change. The actual dollar amount didn't change. I got no interest. Hope that makes sense. As such, people who have money in the bank make out like bandits in deflation. People who lended money, the lenders make out like bandit, bandits too, because not only is that thousand dollars buying more. A thousand dollars today can buy me eleven hundred tomorrow, but I'm also getting interest on that thousand bucks. So what used to be a thousand is now a thousand thirty at three percent interest, which means I can buy even more. The lender makes out like a bad. <laughs> there we go. Right. Hey, buddy. The lender makes out like a bandit during deflation. So what do we want to do? Then? So for me, I'm. but now what else does fine? Well, stocks, you know, if you look at, I'm going to do, a, I was using my man, uh, Daniel Kuhlberg's uh, spreadsheets. My next book I'm working on right now is the barbell method. I really want to do that on the barbell method. And I'm using the S&P 500 solely. It's great. Because uh, stocks are, are deflation in of itself isn't ne neither good nor bad for stocks. It, it, it's, it's somewhat independent, frankly, it just really is. But Going back to 1930s and whatnot, uh, stocks, they, it, it, that was deflationary. The stock market in of itself had no negative effects because of deflation necessarily. I mean, it, it had a, a negative effects because of the leverage that was being pulled back. But deflation, neither it doesn't inherently say that's good or bad for stocks. So stocks are somewhat independent of that. So for me, who I need, still need income because I got this big fat mortgage to pay. So I'll still be working you know, like I do right now, freaking like a crazy man which I enjoy. Uh, I need, I've still put money in stocks. I still need to get some growth for sure. And growth is, in stocks, the only way to get growth in a low cost or a low inflation deflationary environment for sure. Because I need growth. I need growth is what I'm shooting for. I need growth. If I'm retired, I don't need growth. I don't. I mean, I, it's nice to have, but it's not priority by any stretch of the imagination. So because I'm still dollar cost averaging and put money in stocks, that's good. But if I, and I was talking to this guy yesterday, he's two years out, I said, man, I wouldn't do anything. I, and this guy today, I, you know, he had told me about Bernstein's quote, which I love. And I've used this a couple of times in my videos, said, you know, if you won the game, don't play. And I said, why do anything risky right now? Now, again, for me, because I'm still plugging, 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 I'm 100% stocks. For him, I was like, why even do anything? Just sit tight. See how things shake out. Yeah, you might miss a 10% run up. Doesn't really matter, does it? It doesn't for this guy because he's fine. You've won the game, stop playing. Keep your powder dry. And you know, we're gonna revisit in six months or so. And that's what you should do. So if I'm about to retire in a couple, you know, say a year to two, I I, I really suggest you gotta raise some cash. And I've said this a thousand times on Sunday. It has nothing to do with Trump losing, losing. I've said this, I think you really need to raise some cash because if deflation comes. Cash is going to be your salvation without question. So you need to be raising cash, man. Now, that doesn't mean you sell everything. No, 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 no. But you need to have enough cash on the table to be able to deal with a significant crunch that could be coming. Now, look, I'm not one of these negative Nellies. I think at the end of the day, humanity 
is in growth mode. It will forever be. Socialism and communism are death knells, but I don't think we're in socialism. I think we are in nothing but globalism, which isn't socialistic. I mean, socialistic to some degree, but it's not the typical socialism where the government can, it controls the means of production. I mean, well, you know, that's more fascist uh, we're going into, where the government does control the means of production, but they allow private companies to actually do the production because the government knows they can't do it very well. It's fascist. That's where we're, that's where we're literally in. We're certainly going to that more with the you know the global elite. But at the end of the day, there's still going to be growth because humanity is always in growth mode for sure. Always, it's just the nature of the human human brain, which is freaking awesome. Which is why I'm always bullish. But also, I see that at the end of the day, we have a structural fundamental change that's happening right in front of our very eyes. And not to see it, it, it you know, you can say that's paranoia, conspiracy. I don't care. But not to see it is to be Pollyannish, and I'm not. I don't want to be Pollyannish. Because that's dumb. And if I'm wrong, okay, you miss 10% upside. I mean, are you really going to miss a 20% upside between now and spring, between now and next year? Nah. Yeah, we could. Is that going to make or break you? No. Not if you've already won the game, then don't play. Wait to get back in. If you're about that time to retire. So here's retirement. You're two years out. You're two years in. You got that four-year time frame. Two years out, two years in. That is the time. You've got to have some cash on the side to be able to spend if things go south. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And I don't have any, which is kind of concerning to me. Um, I got some, I got a bunch of equity in this whole house and I got a home equity line, which is great. But again, we've seen what happened in 2008 where banks reneged on home equity lines. So that kind of scares me. Not going to so I, that is an issue that I'm in the back of my mind. I'm like, I'd like to have more cash, but I also have debt and I friggin' hate debt. But anyway, what I would suggest highly is that you do not pay off your mortgage. You actually, and if you have a choice, should I throw more money to my mortgage or build up my cash reserves? You need to build up your cash reserves. And that's what I'm starting to try to do. But I'm building up in VTI. I guess my cash reserves are in VTI, which is pretty risky. And as a the professional, I can never recommend that to people. But that's what I'm doing. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, my cash reserves are literally VTI. I'm just plugging away, plugging away, plugging away. And if VTI drops 80%, that sucks. That sucks. And I will uh, figure that one out. But I think, I don't know, well, that could happen. I don't think so. But if I'm about to retire and I will not be earning an income anymore, you just can't take that risk. You can't. Stupid. Don't do that. So. Anyway, we see deflation, we see low inflation, low interest rates, deflation, unemployment that's not going down anytime soon. We've seen more and more lockdowns, which are going to kill more and more entrepreneurs, going to kill more and more um, uh, jobs. We see machines taking over. <coughs> we see AI and all that stuff's inevitable. Nothing can do about it. And we see more and more people going to be let go. It's just, and we see it older demographics as well. But a sneeze. Hold on a second. What do you got? I got to stare at the light, right? Let's not make me sneeze. All that stuff is deflationary. All that stuff is deflationary. The idea that the money supply with all the debt is inherent, inherently inflationary, I just, I just proved that otherwise. There is no correlation that you can point to that says increased debt leads to inflation. There is not. There is a correlation you can point to socialism leads to inflation because it creates scarcity, but you cannot court, you cannot point and say printing or uh, inf uh, debt to GDP leads to inflation. There's no, no correlation, none. Doesn't mean it can't happen, just means they're not positively correlated. But you can say at the end of the day, socialism leads to inflation for sure. But I don't think we're going socialistic. I think it's going to be, like I said, more fascistic of anything. All right, so let's see what uh, the, the, uh, the peanut gallery says. Um, All right, so peanut gallery. <clears throat> oh, good point. Bob says, do we expect an electric car mandate to come to Europe or North America? Yeah, I 100%. 100%. Um, <laughs> Carl says he yelled at his grandparents for voting for Biden. Then he left the cemetery to cool down. I was listening to somebody today that said, man, Joe Frazier, that guy, he's amazing. Uh, nine years after his death, he voted for Biden. I thought that's, so I don't know if there's evidence that Joe Frazier actually voted for Biden or not, but I, I, I chuckled at that. I do expect an electric car mandate without question. And, uh, and they're going to do like they mandate everything. You don't have to do it, but you see what I'm saying? That's how they do it, man. You don't have to get the stupid vaccine. 
but this what this was happened too about the vaccine. Don't even get me started on that crap. I think that might be a bridge too far. I don't think we're ready for mandatory vaccines. I don't think so. It's coming. Don't get me wrong. So get your arguments in gear about the insanity of this reliance on scientism relative to vaccines. Oh, you want kids to have smallpox? No, I don't. Never said that. I don't want to get in an argument about vaccines here tonight, but just I've said it before and I'll say it again. <laughs> Show me any evidence the CDC recommended dosage of vaccines for infants is safe. Any. Show it to me. And there isn't any. I, I haven't looked in 2020. So maybe there's something in 2020 that I'd be happy to read. But show me any evidence before that. The CDC recommended schedule for vaccinations for children was it 19 doses is safe. That you, you won't. And again, less is new. I'd love to see that. So this mandated vaccine from Pfizer or whatever the hell it is. And I mean, whatever the hell it is. I don't think the, the, the country isn't ready for that. So maybe that will be the AOC uh, bridge too far that will get the country to waken up, say, look, man, it's one thing about masks, we're stupid, but you take them off to me, you got a store. It's another thing that mandates some crap goes in my body from some pharmaceutical giant that's funded, but who knows what the hell that money's coming from. One, it's, another, it's a whole nother issue right there. So, but I could easily see electric cars mandated, but it's not a mandate like you must buy an electric car. They never do like that. They do it in a back-ended way. You know, slowly but surely, you'll see ICEs being taken off the shelf because the manufacturers, they can't afford. They're going to have more insurance costs. They're going to have more uh, taxes on a VAT, value-added taxes. I mean, whatever it is, they're just going to make it more and more expensive. And then they're going to couch it that the consumers are demanding EVs. Like the consumers are demanding solar because solar is cheaper per watt now than coal. I mean, of course, it's cheaper for what if the government's mandated. Um, yeah, they want us to make us more feel pain. Exactly. So they can, I completely agree, Patty. Patty says they uh, want us to lock down, uh, make us feel pain so they can justify their tax hikes and government takeovers. Yeah, I completely agree. And what they're going to do in their tax hikes, they're going to say, look, all these people are out of work. We got to take care of them. And so you who are able, ah, that's kind of, that is kind of communistic. Uh, to those who, uh, was it, uh, to those who can, to those who need, it's going to be similar to that. Um, and then for the people who are in need, the entrepreneurs who lost their businesses and whatnot, they're going to be like, I, look, what do I do? I mean, I, I, I got a mortgage to pay, I got kids to feed. I can't, I would love to be a libertarian in this day and age, but there's nothing for me to do. There is no job for me to go to. As such, I will throw in with big daddy government. Um, Biden's going to fire up the money printer and give us out free, free money. How would that not cause inflation? What, again, show me when it did. I just want to see it. I just literally, in Germany, for the love of the good Lord, Germany, that's what they'll say. Um, let's keep going. Hey, Jill. If you're looking at deflation arguments, they've been following Stephen Van Meter. Don't know who that is. Um, so the answer is no, as he talked about deflation. I've been talking about deflation for a while here. Um, yeah, Bob says, don't worry. And remember, inflation always benefits the haves, not the haves nots. So that's how inflation works, man. Inflation works by the haves. That's why they love inflation. That's funny. If you ever look at any Austrian textbook, they talk about this all the time. Inflation benefits the haves, not the haves nots, because it, the, in the, the haves get it first. And when it filters down to us have nots, the economy's already seen an increase in prices. That's how inflation works. Um, so let's just go back to the issue about printing of money. There's something called velocity of money, all right? And at the end of the day, if the money isn't making its way into the economy, it matters not how much government prints, it just doesn't. And we've seen that with Japan. I just, we've seen that with Japan. If the money isn't making its way into the economy, it matters not. And don't forget, by the way, they're going to go with a federal uh, a cryptocurrency. We know that as well. So you can see a mile away what's going to happen is that they're going to make it painful enough for you for you to hold cash that you're going to go electronic. You can see that. I'm not talking about that yet. I don't think that's quite coming. I think that's a couple of years, not that long, ago, but I think it's a couple of years, probably five years out. Um, I'm just talking about the next two years. But for the next, you could easily see, literally probably within five years, there will be a federal, crypt, a federal government crypto where they're going to say, you will use this or you will reduce the value of the dollar for which we guarantee that's happening by the way and that inherently would be somewhat inflationary for sure 
Um, even though it makes the, the dollar scarce, but the reason is because it won't trade for a dollar. You got a dollar bill that says this is worth a dollar by the value of the U.S. government, whatever. So they're going to say we're not going to honor that. We're going to honor it 60 cents on a dollar, 50 cents on a dollar and whatnot, which is in, inherently inflationary because it's destroying the price of the dollar. I, that's not happening. I'm not worried about that in the next couple of years. Um, academic economists are a joke. They don't understand the real world, have skin in the game. Right on, man. Completely agree. Uh, theories fail, they're not on the hook. Well, not just Rogoff, it's all of them. I mean, all of them. Paul Samuelson, we still read his stupid textbooks. In 1989, he was still singing the glories of communism, Soviet Union. <sighs> there you go, Jill, saying, how can we have deflation, all that money being printed in debt? Well, I just said it. Uh, Wisconsin's getting cold, right on, man. Uh, yep, yep. Uh, thanks, Don. Ryan, I'm on the deck grilling brats, Wisconsin. We live in an era of expert cooking. I completely agree. Theoretical versus observable. Yep. Observable is empirical, by the way. Theoretical is just my brain says, and because I have a PhD from Harvard, you should listen to me. Just remember, Bill Buckley, I would much rather be governed by the first 200 people in the Boston phone book than the uh, faculty at Harvard. I completely agree. Uh, yeah, I completely, so Bob, this is exactly right. I expect them to go after savings as a major thorn in their side. The guy completely, 100%. That is my concern, but it's not going to happen yet. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, that's a little bit of a longer five-year plan to a uh, Stalinistic thing here. I can see that. Um, yeah, privilege tax, exactly. Yeah, four to six-week dark winter uh, by the freaking clown who says uh, we need another lockdown, dark winter. And even though these people who said that Trump was being xenophobic by saying we're going to ban travel from China, my about these same people are saying now that Trump didn't do no. The whole thing is corrupt. We look, we know as corrupt as all can be. We all know that. Um, inflation is when your home built in 1994 is worth more every year. Well, that I mean that is inflation. 100. percent That is the real estate goes to the, the level of inflation. But there's something else thrown in in, in real estate. It's supply, uh, supply as well as regulation, which adds to the price. So if, if California mandates you have to put solar PV on every roof. And inherently makes that house is more expensive. Is that inflationary? No, it's, it's government dictate. And that's all there is to it. If the government mandates this, if the government mandates that, if the government has rent control. I think rent control got shot down in California. So California actually, to my surprise, not only did I think three Republicans win house seats, uh, they, they, uh, they showed up uh, to get rid of a lot of crappy uh, legislation or uh, referendums are out there. They got rid of, they kept no affirmative action. They got rid of um, some other property tax bill and that they did not pass rent control. And that's freaking awesome. So kudos to California. I'll never go there, but kudos to them. There's still a, a heart beating in California, which is shocking to me. Uh, but again, you got, I mean, the, the issue is if you limit supply, Portland, Oregon, they say you can't build. And so what happens is that makes the value of the things that are built is, I mean, this is what, what we call an economics uh you're limiting your competition the barriers to entry i i tell you i had a great well not great, a good friend of mine when we lived in harrisonburg virginia he wanted to run a taxi cab company because there was only one in town that one in town could charge whatever prices just like any public utility essentially the, the service was horrible the prices were high and they were unreliable so he said i'm gonna do a freaking uh, taxi company to compete and they were he to get the approval by the city council the 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 current uh, constitu the current uh, incumbent had to admit that they could not meet demand. Well, what incumbent is going to do that? The incumbent said, "No, that's the current taxi company who had the monopoly." The monopoly said, no, "We're not going to admit that." And so the Harrisonburg City Council said, "Until they admit that they can't serve the demand, you don't have a right to license to operate here as barrier to entry." What do you think that did to the price of cabs? Of course, it made it go up because they're the only game in town. There's no competition. Is that inflation or is that freaking uh, government mandates? It's government mandates. It's, it's freaking regulation. Same thing with housing. If you say you must have, I don't know, freaking a quarter acre for every house and you have to have solar panels, you have to have this, you have to have that, you have to, have, I mean, it's going to make the prices of the land and the housing go up. It's not inflationary or deflationary. It's regulatory that does that. It's just basic economic stuff. And all these, why do you think Houston's so cheap? Now, I don't know what Houston's done 
the, the textbook example of the property in Houston being so cheap was because they had limited to any regulations. I don't think they had any zoning back in the day, whereas Port and Oregon had huge, has huge zonings because it's all elitist crap. Houston said, do whatever the hell you want. We don't care. I don't know if it's still like that. Uh, uh, the old mayor, he ran for he ran for a Senate or governor or something like that, which I actually liked as a Democrat. But I would, you know, I think when I was down there, I forgot his name. But anyway, uh, he was like, dude, do whatever the hell you want, essentially. And uh, because that Houston was cheap, they could build wherever they want to do. Other cities like Port and Oregon say, no, you can't. And as such, Port and Oregon real estate prices have shot up. It's not because of inflation, it's because of regulatory environment. Um, that was John. That was uh, uh, Nassim Nicholas Taleb, intellectual yet idiotic, from his book Skin in the Game. Uh, just like de Blasio's daughter let slip, Joel stole the election. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, we're going to steal the Senate races in Georgia since no one gives a crap about cheating. Well, apparently, according to our great Secretary of State, and where the hell is our governor? I mean, literally, the where I, I, like I don't read the Atlanta Journal Constitution, but my wife's got the local news on when we're eating and stuff like that. I, the governor has been literally absent. It's the weirdest thing. I was talking to this guy from Texas. They say he must have been bought out by by who? I mean, it's one thing to go to D.C. and get bought out, but I mean Georgia. It's I, I just where's the governor? Why isn't he sitting there saying? You freaking better not. We're going to make I, that's the weird. And he's a Republican. What, what has Stacey Abrams got on these guys? Stacey Abrams apparently is our governor in default. It's the weirdest thing. This is the strangest freaking thing. I've heard a couple of times from Secretary of State, I've heard nothing from the governor, nothing about the sanctity of the vote, of legal voting, protection of our rights to vote, citizens' ability to vote and make sure you're not disenfranchised. I've heard nothing. But I've heard Stacey Abrams all over the place. It is the strangest thing. I, I mean, it literally, it's like this guy's absent. It's I, I don't understand it. It's not. It's it's I, I <laughs> the squeamishness about taking on Stacey Abrams. I just don't get it. She's not the sharpest knife in the drawer. It shouldn't be that hard to take on and say we're going to make sure every legal vote counts. All votes matter. Legal. That, uh, what is so hard about that? And yet I see Stacey Abrams all over the place and nothing with the governor. It's the, it's the strangest thing. I don't get it. Uh, we'll all be eating bugs living in camps guarded by social workers. Uh, Sidney Powell interview on Lou Dobbs night, explosive out of some hope. Uh, house prices fall with deflation. Uh, housing is different, man. How, again, housing is more regulatory and there's not enough supply as it is, frankly. And then, of course, the price of labor isn't cheap either. And then we're going to have you know, huge minimum wage laws, all that stuff. Housing is a little bit different because housing has lots of regulatory issues in there for sure. So the answer to the question is, is somewhat kind of like stocks, actually. It's a little bit different in that regard. Uh, I've seen third party in charge, executive branch of Jesse Ventura. Yep. And uh yeah, I, I completely. Yeah, but I, I, I think pulverizer, right? My third party stuff does kind of concern me. So I'm not sure that's a, uh, the panacea, that's for sure. Um, if you don't have your deed in hand, the banks will call your note and evict you. It's going to get ugly. The crooked banks are must hang. Yeah, I'm not sure they're going to. Uh, another book from Richard Koo right here. Balance short recession. Balance sheet recession. Yeah, right on. Richard Kuh's were um, uh, the, the holy grail of macroeconomics. It's just such a classic book. Such a classic book. All right, what do we do with our cash? Uh, look, I don't have any qualm putting CDs, Marty, without question. Without question. I, or Ginny May. I'm a big fan of Ginny May. Um, I got no qualm with that because they're government bonds. There's not much downside risk. They are guaranteed by the federal government, and they will give you a little bit of a yield. Uh, but see, look, that's what I'm saying. The thing with cash is that cash in of itself, you don't need to get interest if we go to a deflationary economy. You just don't. Uh, but hang tight on it. And you know, I, at the end of the day, I've, I've told you a million times a Sunday, I think buying some gold and silver coins always makes sense. It always does. I'm not a gold bug. I'm not like that. But just buying gold and silver I, I, every year, I, I purchase some because I think it's important to build up a little bit of a portfolio of gold and silver. Not in ETFs, not in big ounces. I mean, you can have a couple ounces, but you want stuff you can barter with. 
That's that's just basic prepping. It's not saying the zombies are coming. It's just saying, look, we got this, we got that, we got this. Let's add a little bit of gold and silver to our portfolio just in case. I've had too many examples of people tell me they're, who fled communist you know, when commies were coming in. Well, too many examples. I've had a number of, you know, let's just put it this way. When you need to flee, the one thing they will take to get you to flee a country when the commies are coming is gold and silver. That's just all there is to it. Will that happen here? Probably not. Why not be prepared? Why not be prepared? What if the friggin' government matching or the uh, uh, matriculation, if that's the right word, of the new uh, Bitcoin, the federal Bitcoin, it works is a friggin' cluster fark. And people are like, I don't trust that. I don't trust that. I don't trust anything. But here's some gold. You know, like, give me some freaking head of lettuce. You see what I'm saying? Well, why not do that? No. Uh, uh, cash. See, I, the problem with cat my cons I agree with you in the short term, Bob. Bob says cash might be safer in a mattress than a bank. I, I, there is something to be said about that. I mean, don't forget the bank shuts down a la uh, Great Depression. You're not getting your cash out. You know, I mean, we have theoretically ones and zeros. We click here, click there. But, you know, in theory, <laughs> uh, it works until it doesn't. Uh, the problem is at the end of the day, I do think that at some point, and again, not in the next short term, but sooner rather than later, four or five years there is going to be this mass, mass, mass movement to electric bed. And they're going to say because they want to stop drug dealers. You can see that in my way. COVID's on, you know, the cash is spreading disease. Drug dealers have it. This is the only way to assure that you don't get disease from cash and the only way to ensure that drug dealers don't want our money. Yeah, and everyone's going to fall for it. Yeah, we hate drug dealers. It's freaking nuts. I put, there's a city of Portland, Maine, where I was born and raised. Five people have died already. There's only 65,000 people in the city. Five people died from a over the overdose, uh, overdose. I can't remember if it was last year or this last month, something like that. A, a record number of deaths from OD, and uh, it's it freaking disgusting. It has everything to do with the lockdown. Everything. It, it's more and more people becoming suicidal, becoming depressed, becoming hooked on on bad stuff. And I uh, posted on there. I said, look. <laughs> And people are like, we got to kill the, the dealers. And I said, you can go after the dealers all you want. But until you go after the demand, the dealers will always be there. So why don't we try something new and go after the, the Hunter Bidens of the world? I mean, why does Hunter Biden get a break? But some poor black kid in freaking Compton goes to jail. That makes sense. And uh, people, you're an idiot. Blah, blah, blah. It's just the, the, everyone wants to go after the dealer. No one wants to go after the supply, the, uh, the user and the sad thing is a user if he is there will forever be and there will always be a dealer but the thing is you're never going to go after the user because hunter biden will never go to jail and i don't frankly want him to. that's why i say or we just try a whole different approach instead of going after the dealer which all it does is create violence and chaos if we're not going after the user why don't we just make it easier for the user to get something safe how about that so they don't overdose because right now it's a it's it's killing the, the dealers and the uh, collateral damage, i.e. an 11 year old black kid got killed yesterday in Atlanta, uh, drive by shooting, of course, just because these guys don't know how to shoot and half of them are freaking drugged up anyway. He died in his dad's arms, freaking instant Black Lives Matter said nothing. At the end of the day, who's the end result? Who's getting the drugs? Probably Hunter Biden. You see what I'm saying? But Hunter Biden will never see the inside of a jail because he's got connections. And I'm just using him as my avatar for the wealthy elite who can get drugs unencumbered um, and no one cares. But as long as we go after the dealer, we can sound like we're tough on crime. Go after the dealer. Uh, um, my, my grandparents. Yeah. Small business plunging, John, I saw that. That was, that was actually, I, I heard that on uh I heard that today. That was kind of what led me to think. I think that was actually, I think the, that survey came out pre Biden steel, but uh, the uh, small business stuff is concerning because the second lockdown is coming. And if you're a small business owner, uh, there's, no, there's literally nothing you can do. It's, it's, it's just it's just disgusting. Everyone, we got even freaking crazy John Offsaw saying we got to give support for small businesses because everyone wants to give support to small businesses. How about you let small businesses operate, you freaking fools? Just let them run. If people are so damn scared of COVID, they don't go, then they don't have to go. Well, it just the whole thing is insane. The whole the whole thing is insane. Quarantine the healthy and make them lock down because no one's dying from this crap. It's it's the it's, I, I will say this to a blue in the face. 
we've done lost our minds and somehow we just sit there and take it. And, uh, but I did see some sign of hope. I was at Walmart yesterday and more and more people are going maskless. That made me feel pretty good. Um, not that many, but more and more people. So that, that was a sign of hope that made me feel okay. Are people starting to say F you freaking people? I hope, I hope. Uh, John says his uh, grandparents actually did put cash between the box spring yep, uh, in California. Uh, we've had uh, Birking and Best Buy go under this year. It isn't just little guys. Uh, Japan, the closest thing to M I Yeah, I, good. I 100%. Uh, I think we are MMT essentially, John. I mean, <laughs> we haven't had... Uh, surpluses uh, we've had what six years ever of surpluses i think we had 200 nixon i think and 400 clinton that's it so we've had mmt as far as the eye can see ourselves i mean this this is what i'm saying these people say we need to try something new mmt i said what the hell do you think we've been doing we've been spending like drunken infantry men for many many moons it's normally drunken sailors but i gotta say infantry because i was in the army and i don't want to offend my sailor friends out there uh jericho green a sailor. I don't know if you follow Jericho out there. You should from California, but he was in the Navy. Don't hold that against him. But uh, exactly. The Fed is out of bullets. Uh, uh, the government has to spend, spend, spend with this much deflation going on. I, I'm not even sure we're there yet uh, here in the United States. I don't know. But MMT, we've been doing MMT for years. And yet, look where we are. In Japan, just because they don't title it MMT, they're freaking spending like drunken sailors. Ooh, drunken infantrymen. Uh, uh, I feel like it's design crash, the surprise rate cuts by the feds and the Saudis crashing oil. Yeah, America is still the best, man, without question. Um, I, I, Dan, I don't, uh, I don't deny that. I've never denied that. We are still the best. The still the beacon of hope for the rest of the world. And I don't want to sound like I'm depressed or anything. I'm just saying, look, if I'm getting ready to retire, this is what I'm advising clients. If I'm getting ready to retire, I say, make sure you have your cash savings built up. And I always say four years cash. If you haven't done it, now's the time to do it because the market is up, man. And just, just look, I, I, yes, there is a potential opportunity cost. You might miss more. But you know what the downside risk is? Is a hell of a lot worse than missing 10% of the upside. It just really is. So you miss 10% of the upside to protect 60% down, 40%. Like what, I don't know what the downside could be. But why not just put some money in cash just to be safe? Keep it idle, just, just for simplicity. Uh, Dr. Fauci would wipe the floor of me. He's a runner and incredibly fit. <laughs> okay. Um, we just got a lockdown order here in Oregon starting Wednesday. Yeah, we. I was trying to uh, convince my wife to go to, uh, to, to Washington over thanksgiving just to show we're out there in bellingham and uh we thought about it. i said no they're gonna lock down you can see that a mile away and now here's the confirmation confirmation by my man firefighter uh but oregon locked down on wednesday and no is it but even now what's gonna have the penalties are gonna get even worse too man if they find you do you see what's going on in australia follow my man uh abby yeeman y-e-m-e-n is that his name let me see he's on parlor if I can, let me see if I can't find him on Parlor. Hold on just a second. Right, let's go here, Parlor. Uh, Abby, he's like a, an Israeli weightlifter who just doesn't give a crap. Oh, that's Terrence Williams. I'm not feeling Terrence Williams. Yeah, I'm following Terrence Williams. All right, All right so let's go to Abby. Yemeni, maybe? Yeah, Ab, here we go. This guy, let me bring up Parlor. Uh, you guys need to be getting on Parlor. That's all there is to it. You need to be getting on Parlor. This guy right here, Abby Yemeni. This is my man. He's uh, he is Chief Osborne correspondent for the uh, uh, for Rebel News in charge of telling the other side of the story. Proud Israeli. This guy's got like sixteen brothers and sisters or something like that. It's crazy, crazy. Anyway, so let's uh. Facebook replaces Trump's present title for a political candidate. This is why millions are moving. To, what the hell? 
this is why I'm grateful for Parler because if uh, or for Facebook doing it because it wasn't for Facebook and Twitter censoring the president, the Parler would still be on the fringes. They've done their own grave. They're actually replacing it instead of saying president is saying political candidate. Lockdowns are not the answer. Ask the people of Melbourne. Cuomo was killed in New York. If Biden steals the election, democracy. Okay. But yeah. Oh, right there. If Biden steals the election, democracy falls in America and Hong Kong simultaneously. The people of Hong Kong need a Trumpster. Um, pa- 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 Parler is trending on Twitter. <laughs> I, want, I want to see if I can't show you something, though. Uh, right here. Please find this family. 1,652 for going on a socially distanced bushwalk. Then they refused to renew the father's security license until the matter was resolved. They killed his livelihood. Today we force them to withdraw because screw bullies, the first of many. Um, But I mean, that's what I'm talking about. That, that, how many people is that happening to were just because you got this one guy saved, how many people lost their livelihood because they didn't follow your stupid rules and regulations? It's uh, it's nuts. All right, let's just go through these real quick, and we'll call it a night. Um, blank. There we go. Again, I'm not depressed. I'm just seeing what I see, man. Um, Fauci throws baseball like a girl. That's what I say. Not like a wisp, like a girl. Um. I don't know, Bob. Bob says at some point the people have enough and rise up against it. How? I mean, I, I mean, maybe, but I don't know. Um, really, as bad as it looks, the only mark is the only game in town. I, I completely agree with that, Bob. That's what I say. Uh, um, I, I 100%. So I say you look at real estate, you look at bonds, you look at uh, stocks. Of the three, the major investing opportunities, uh, stocks are the cheapest of the three, for sure. Rental real estate, I'm not getting involved in that. It's not my area of expertise. I have no desire at all to be involved in rental real estate. So some people could be. That's fine. Not me. Um, so stocks, bonds, uh, and or real estate. Well, I have real estate in this house. Uh, I have no bonds and I have no cash. I have everything in stocks because of the three, that's the cheapest. But I'm not needing to withdraw my money to live on anytime soon. I hope. Uh, that's my concern because if I if I can't make it go out of this anymore, I will need to. And that's the risk. I'm, but I'm willing to take that risk for sure look once you've been poor you don't i don't want to ever go back being poor i've been poor not poor and and, uh i'd rather not be poor poor sucks but it doesn't it's not the end of the world you know what i'm saying it's just not it's just not the end of the world being poor Uh, so i guess if you've never been there it could scare the hell out of you but for me it's just eh, whatever i mean it happens my kids are getting older as every day every day i survive is one less day i have to provide for my children and so because that's all right, well, for me, if the stock market goes to zero, it's not going to happen, but theoretically it could. But what do you think is going to happen to bonds? If the stock market goes to zero, I think bonds are going to sit there and flat. I mean, the corporate bonds will go kaput. You think government bonds, people are like, oh, I, you know, the stock market is bad, but I'll go to the government bonds. Oh, the whole capital markets will be kaput. That's not happening. Not happen. The government's not going to allow that to happen. There's too much assets in stocks. I mean, so what I mean by that is the Fed's already involved too much. It's, it's just not going to happen. Now, could the stocks fall 30, 40, 50%? Sure, absolutely. But again, because I'm willing to take that risk because I don't see that myself needing to draw on that money, uh, it's a risk I'm worth taking. But because I'm still intending to plug, 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 if you're intending to draw, 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 you can't have that. Um, you always have something in your hand, but you never smoked. <laughs> Harry, uh, you're not Jeffrey Tubin, are you? Harry's always got something in his hand, but he's never smoked. That's what Jeffrey Tubin said. <laughs> Harry, this is a G rated show. Uh, uh, what happened, uh, Georgia voters? How does Georgia go by it? Well, it hasn't gone by it. I mean, I'm just telling you, man. It's, it's, the corruption is mind-boggling, and I hate to say it. We had the voter, the voter integrity project that Trump gave to uh, Pence. What, what did Pence do? Pence was also in charge of the freaking COVID response team. I mean, what did he do? I, look, I'm sure Pence is a beautiful man, wonderful guy. He loves his wife. I get it. These guys are playing chess or checkers, while the Dems, the libs, are playing chess. That's all there is to it. Even the Trump, to some degree. I mean, he just. They rely too much on these people, and these people are too used to playing chess. 
checkers, checkers, while the libs play chess. That's all there is to it. So Pence was sitting there saying, uh, COVID response team, we'll just, uh, nothing. We'll let the economy shut down continually, continually. Pence was in charge of the Voter Integrity Project. I haven't heard a damn thing. Republicans had had both House Chambers of Congress in 2017, 18. The only thing that got was McCain bowled on the Obamacare. Well, that sucks, but there could have been other things that got passed. We did get TCJ. That's great. Trump cuts cuts, but they did nothing in terms of you know, hell. The state of Georgia is run by Dem Republicans up and down. Do we do anything about voter integrity? Nope. It's not like we haven't been warned. I mean, Cynthia McKinney, love her, hate her. She was warning us freaking 15 years ago, 20 years ago, and we hadn't done crap. Yeah, zero debt. That's the way to do it. No debt, man. Uh, Jill never had a penny of debt. Who's G? Oh, G. I'm out of right on, man. Hard to know which economists are correct these days. Almost like politics, inflation. Yeah, there is no one right or wrong. We just don't know. That's why you got to be prepared for both. Um, you got to be prepared, man. That's what I mean. It's just that's why you have to hedge. So you might be right. You might be wrong. You have some gold. You have some stocks. You see what I'm saying? It's just you know, that whole thing right there. You just got to be prepared for both. Uh, because what if you're wrong? I mean, hell, what if I'm wrong? We go through mass inflation. Well, I'd be glad I have a mortgage. You know what I'm saying? For sure. And I'm not glad because I hate having to pay the debt. But if we go to mass inflation, then having a debt will be wiped out quicker than my than I would have thought. I don't see it happening, but it could. I mean, for sure. The facts are we, we've never been down a road like this ever. Um, Uh, the good point about energy, I do think energy will go up in price without question. The more they mandate green crap, the energy, price of energy is going up. I, I, I think so. The more they regulate housing, that will go up as well. I, I completely agree. But, uh, uh, but I easily see energy going up without question that go up. And, uh, but that's one of, the, you know, one of the benefits of solar photovoltaic is that you are locking in uh, future prices with today's dollars, essentially. Um, it, look, I'm not getting, we, I, south facing is that way. Yeah, south facing is that way. Uh, this, that's not a, it's, we, the trees, you, for solar on your rooftop, you gotta be, you don't have to be, you should be south facing and we're facing south that way. Huge canopy of, of trees out there. It's just not gonna work. Um, that's north mm -hmm. behind us here and that's west that way. Um, or, yeah, north, yeah, east, west that way. And so basically, for us, the south phasing is it covers up uh, for any kind of photovoltaic. Um, now, what we could do is we could put them on the ground, which is where you always want your PV panels. You don't want them on your roof; you can avoid it. You want them on the ground, off the ground, but on it, you know, kind of tilted a little bit. But uh, you know, I'm not going to put that in the, the, the entirety of my backyard. Just not going to happen. But I mean, at the end of the day, I, look, I don't, I'm not, I'm not against solar photovoltaic at all. Not at all. It's just the idea they're going to solve our energy needs. It's just stupid. It's not going to happen. But I mean, I think buying them, if you have south phasing and you got sunshine uh, and you got some battery banks, because you don't want to be uh, solely grid tied. That's stupid. You want to have battery banks to provide you off grid electricity, not heating, but electricity. I think locking in some solar is a good idea. As a prepper, not as a, a consumer of green consciousness, or not because solar is so efficient. No, but it's a good way to say I need, I will get enough uh, electricity generated for my solar panels with battery banks to be able to power my house for a little bit. And when I say my house, not your freaking heat, not your hair dryer, not your coffee machine, French pump is what you need, um, but. It'll be enough to turn the lights on, keep your computers going, charge your phone. Absolutely. Absolutely. Probably run your fan uh, when you've got natural gas heat in your house or run your fan so you can kick on the, the, um, the, the blower to, to heat your home. Uh, I'm all about it. All about it. But the idea you're going to freaking power your house, stupid. It's just not happening. Uh, one of the biggest ways to save money is do projects yourself. Couldn't agree more. Right on, man. Right on. Uh, he, we know who the boss is at John Pablo, yeah. Sniffy Pablo. Uh, yeah, but see, the problem with the permanent portfolio is you're buying gold through ETFs. You're not buying gold through the actual bullion. And I, I think that's a mistake. Uh, and then you got 
No, I let, no, if you're retired, I'm a big fan of DTI. I just think you need cash uh, to, to coincide with that. I'm not saying you go all into cash. Hell, I want to make sure people understand that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if you haven't yet built your cash portfolio and you're, and you're in that four-year time frame, two years out, two years in, you better have some cash on the side to cover you for the next two years in case things go to go south quickly. In case we go freaking Victoria, Australia. That's bad, bad. And we are. We are, man. We're going Victoria, Australia. We got a bunch of little tyrants running around here, mostly in the Democratic Party, but not all. Look at Mike DeWine. Freaking kiss my butt, DeWine. Freaking sour grapes. Get it, DeWine, sour grapes. Freaking scumbag. But what's happening is, I, I know, so VTI is great for retirees, without question. But cash is good, too, to cover for the next couple of years. Um, debt is fine as long as your liquidity can cover it. If you have that liquidity, I tend to agree with that. Absolutely. Yeah, prevailing add to the broad public is debt is no. I, man, I see, this is where I think we've been led to believe. I, GDC, I, I've been thinking about this a lot lately. I've been reading this book called Propaganda by Jacques Ellu. And just other things too. And I think what has happened over the last 50 years with the, uh, the command central from the federal government on down is to put Americans in debt with the uh, carrot and the stick. That way we keep chasing the carrot. And when we try to go on our own thing, they hit us with a stick. I, I actually think that's, I think it's not some big conspiracy. I just think there's, you know, I think there's a big cabal, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's some conspiracy that the Rockefellers or whoever's the Rothschild said, get Americans to debt, but I think that has happened, uh, but almost by osmosis, to be probably honest with you. We need debt, we need debt, we have to have bigger, 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 we can't afford it, we'll take, we'll take easy credit. That will keep us in line. I, I literally have come to that conclusion. I, look, I'm there, I, I get it, man. I talked to a guy today, he said, I don't know how you quit your job, because uh, I was making good money at USAA with four kids and whatnot. I said, I just had to, and it worked out for me, but it, it, you know, a lot of people can't make that, they can't. And so they're going to stay in the, and they're going to stay in their job, told what to do, told what to do, just nodding. And I don't look, man, I don't blame anybody for that, but they would not do that if they didn't have the debt. If they didn't chase the debt, college loans, car loans, housing payments, if they didn't have all that, they could just leave and free themselves, but they can't because they're enslaved to their debt and they're enslaved to their debt masters. Essentially that's their boss. And then healthcare, throw healthcare on top of that. Yeah. If you don't have a corporate job, you're not getting health care. Share a story. My wife knows somebody who needs neck surgery, right? So has some freaking stuff in her neck. She doesn't, she doesn't, I mean, she's, she's, let's just put it this way. She's had a, a rough life, all right? So she, uh, she has, she's independent, wealthy, um, but she's not working in a, in a job, if that makes sense. So she, she's a mentor for, for women who are, uh, uh, addicts. That's what she does. All right. Because she has enough money to, to be able to do that. But she doesn't have a job where she has health, health insurance. So she's on Obamacare. The only guy anywhere near her who could do the surgery is 100 miles away. She's gone to this guy's doctor's office before. It's like going to a third world doctor. It's dirty. It's just it's, she took pictures and sent to us. I was like, damn. And she's like, I, I don't trust that guy to operate on my neck. This is what happens in national health care right here. Anyway, so she was, I'm going to have to pay for myself out of pocket. Now, thankfully, she has the resources to do this. It's going to be like 100 to 150,000 bucks. And she's paying cash. So everyone thinks if you pay cash, it'll be cheaper. No, not necessarily. So what is the incentive now? Well, I mean, so you see where this is going. There is no private health insurance. You go to Obamacare, in which case you freaking, you get Dr. Nick, Nick, Nick Riviera, Hello, everybody. Hello, Dr. Nick. Or you work for a company. That's it. There's no in between. You go Obamacare or you work for a company where they get the, the, the insurance for you. There's no in between. And it's, uh, <laughs> and I was talking to this guy yesterday because I talked, I mean, I have lots of clients, which is great. This guy's saying, what if I even don't do it? And I said, look, as a financial planner, I can't tell you not to have insurance. I just can't. However, let's say you needed to get, you know, operated on whatnot. You didn't have insurance. They build you. I'm not going to tell you to go bankrupt. I'm not going to tell you to do that. See what I'm saying? But we didn't make the rules, but I'm not going to tell you to go bankrupt. If that were to happen, that you needed some emergency care and the hospital builds you for 25,000 bucks. See what I'm doing there? We didn't make the rules, man. 
It's the rules we've been dealt with. We didn't freak. We had literally nothing to say in this crap. Well, nothing. And so because that has been forced on us, you either work for a company, you go on Obamacare, there's no in between. And you no, know, MediShare isn't, don't tell me about MediShare. I was on MediShare, I like it, but do not tell me that they're gonna cover $150,000 of neck surgery. You know why? Because MediShare is paid for other people like me, like you. They cannot give away the store to cover your $150,000 neck surgery. It's just not gonna happen. So what if you need it? What do you do? Hope for Obamacare doctor, Dr. Nick is going to take care of you. I don't know. Uh, all right. So uh, PayPal distribution of the masses. Yeah, I 100% think that's going to be the way it's going to be. Yep. Uh, Bitcoin probably revisit 12K. Rent, uh, um, PayPal distribution, I 100%. And PayPal, just like the Dominion Electric uh, election people, they donated 50000 to the Clinton Foundation in 2015. I guarantee if you look at PayPal, they got some serious inroads with our superiors in the federal government. Guarantee Guarantee it. Um, uh, let's see. Yep, next surgery is cost, but will cost more post-op care. Ugh. Uh, wives and kids are balls to change your crappy job. <laughs> yeah, but at least they bring you joy. Uh, yeah, until battery dies and panels, Brad, 100% of it. Right? This whole idea is that solar is going to solve. I mean, look, it, 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 I just don't want to really get into it right now, but this solar panacea is so flipping silly. I, I, I have some guy on YouTube just today on my channel said, well, solar is coming. It'll be there in 15 years. I said, dude, we've been saying that for so flipping long. I'll, I will post it again. I post it every now and again about the Wall Street Journal from 1979. Walter Mossberg posted, Carter says half of our energy, not electricity, energy needs. This is President Carter. Half our energy needs will be met by solar in the year 2000. As a, as a headline in the Wall Street Journal from 1979. President Carter, half our energy needs, not electricity, but energy will be met by solar in the year 2000. <laughs> this, the idea that, you know, but we're more efficient now. Back then, PV panels were only 10% efficient. Now they're 25%. Oh, wow. You cannot change the physics of solar, my friends. Every square meter in the US or just in the world essentially is roughly 100 to 50, 170 watts or every, every square meter on average is about 1100 watts when well, the sun's right above you, 1100 watts. And the US and Atlanta is about 170 is your average wattage that you're getting from the sun, all right? Cause that includes when right now it's dark. So on average, you're getting 170 watts per square meter. So think about this. That's when the sun is above you. I mean, that's on average. So for a 24 hour day, you're getting on average on every square meter of land, 170 watts. Your solar panel of one square meter, which ain't sh small, by the way, it's probably about the size of this table I'm sitting at right now. It gives you about, let's just say 25% efficiency if it's a, a good one. And that's not cheap either. There is no such thing as a 50%, 60%, 70% efficient solar panel. It'll never come. It'll never come. They have 35% efficiency in labs. It's not coming. That'll never come to the mass market. It's not. It's a lab thing. It's great. It sounds great. It's not coming. So you got 25% efficiency on average 170 watts. So you can take 170, divide that by 25 or four, whatever that is, 55 watts, something like that. 45, I think it's 45 watts. So you're getting 45 watts per every square meter of a photovoltaic panel. You take your trusty calculator, 45 times 24, that gives you how many kilowatt hours you get in the day. It, it, I, I, off the top of my head, I think it's like 900. Maybe it's 1,000, maybe it's one kilowatt hour. You're not getting, I mean, just think about that. I mean, if you haven't gone to LED lights, you're freaking, yeah, just your, your incandescent light bulb would just use a 60 watt incandescent light bulb. So times that by 24, I don't even know what that is. But that's a lot, that's more than that one square meter or meter square yeah square meter uh, photovoltaic panel that one square meter photovoltaic panel in Atlanta at a whatever I said efficiency twenty five percent efficiency can't even power that freaking sixty watt incandescent light bulb it's ah 
It's peace. Oh, let me get you. I'll show you. Oi, 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 oi. Lots of stuff on Facebook. 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 I'm not going to be able to find. Hold on, Jesus. Ah, no. No. One of these days I'm going to get my books in order here. Ah, yeah, well, I'm going to bring up the book. I'll, I'll bring it up, actually. All right, so we got the story of solar energy, the fabulous fireball, Diaz Halsey. He talks a lot about uh, hydrogen, hydrogen and everything, experiments with solar energy. It's actually quite interesting, uh, the story of solar energy. It's, it's, if you like solar, it's, it's fun. It's fun. I like solar. Uh, Halsey right there, fuel cells, power for tomorrow, where he talks about hydrogen. It's actually pretty interesting and uh, good stuff. Of course, the best book on, on all this to get you out of your – uh, feeling about solar energy is going to change the world. Is this uh, sustainable energy without the hot air? Uh, my man McKay, who died, uh, too bad, but he was a good guy. But this is this is he's a lib. He's a, he's definitely a green guy, but he recognizes the physics behind solar and just all alternative fuels. He says, look, at the end of the day, until we reduce consumption, and he says, don't fly, don't fly, don't drive. He literally says, don't fly, don't drive. If you continue to do that, we'll never be able to get. Uh, We'll never be able to get a carbon uh, free of carbon unless we use nuclear. Weird. Uh, by the way, I want to I'm going to share with you real quick. Um, this is my man, energy advocate. They buy these books, man. This guy. If you're interested in this stuff and you just want to debate people because you know they don't know what they're talking about, but you're not quite sure you you know enough, uh, get my man Vernon Hayden. And I look, I get his newsletter. In fact, I just got this most recent one just the other day. As a matter of fact. Uh, Bad Green Deal. He talks about Bad Green Deal. I don't know if you all can see that. Energy Advocate. So get these books right here, um, which I have. A Primer on Renewable Energy, Energy Textbook. I think I just ordered some books from too, didn't I? There we go. Let me move this. Um, uh, let me pull on a second. I thought I did I not send it to him. I thought I did. Anyway, we got uh, right here, Energy at Textbooks, fantastic. You got to get that. A primer on renewable energy. I got both of them. Maybe it's upstairs. I can't remember. Um, uh, where's the other one he did? I can't remember. Let's go to this. I forgot what it was. Another one I got from him. Uh, climate alarmist, confused, cause with effect. Um, enter bookmark. There seemed like I'm missing one I got from old Vernon here. Hold on just a second. So I, I enjoy this stuff because it's energy a textbook. Yep, we got that. Uh, his newsletter, get that. It's a season to bundle. Tis a season to bundle. Yep. Uh, uh, many benefits of CO2 enrichment, a primer on renewable energy. There we go. Did I talk about that? I can't remember. This right here. Yeah, I think I did. Um, uh, primer on. Uh, CO2, global warming, and coral reefs, all that stuff. It seems like I'm missing one that electrodynamics, uh, CNC, look at that. CNC, uh, the health hazards not going nuclear, so much great stuff in here. Element of probability, elements of applied probability theory. I don't have that one. Um, hammer and tickle. A crowd of Czechs admire the U.S. ambassador's Cadillac parked in the Prague Street. One of them says to a neighbor, Isn't it beautiful? What a show of technology and economic power. Yes, answers the man, a great product of the Soviet industry. You crazy? Don't you know a Cadillac? Sure I do. It's you whom I don't know. I don't get it. Um, ooh, structural language. Oh, cool. I like that stuff. Ooh. Anyway, lots of good stuff on here. Lots of good stuff. Um, so I'm a big fan. Big fan, first time, long time. Energy at Textbook's fantastic. And he will go into uh, solar, uh, nuclear. He'll go into hydro, uh, hydroelectric. Uh, wind. wind is evil, uh, for sure. Anyway. 
So for those of you who get solar panel power, no, I'm just a realist. I know how it works. And to know how it works knows you aren't going to solve the world's energy needs with solar. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Uh, and welcome to Obamacare. I couldn't agree more. Uh, yep. Uh, it'll cost more at post op. Oh, boy. Ooh. Lydia, Obamacare doesn't have good surgeons? Well, how are you supposed to pay for it then? Are you still on here, Lydia? Talk to me about that. That's uh, It doesn't have good surgeons? Man. Elon Musk was tested four times at the same time yesterday. Same test, same nurse, same machine. Two tests are positive, two tests are... I, yeah, look, I love Elon Musk. Love that guy. Some of the, uh, the the cult stuff is kind of weird, but that's not because of him. It's because people are just looking for a hero. The fact that he's come, I, I love it, man. Freaking more power to Elon Musk. That's fantastic. I had a friend who set up an appointment to get tested. And it was taking too long. He left and got a letter in the mail. Said he's that's crazy. All right, so can I make a point? Lydia's big lib out in California. I like Lydia. She got a YouTube channel. Fan, big fan, first time, long time. Um, but anyway, see, Lydia is an open-minded lib. That's why I like her. Um, I guarantee she and I could be just quite friendly towards each other. I guarantee, even though we disagree. Lydia owns firearms. Uh, a name like Lydia Santiago, I assume there's some Mexican uh, descent in there. So Mexican-American of some sort or some kind of Latin American, which is what the Republican Party needs to be focusing on like crazy, like I talked about the other day. Well, I guess last night we need to be getting, uh, but we can't do it to the extent that we lose whites, but we got to do it where we open up and get more and more people that aren't, uh, that aren't typical Republicans. And the way you do that is you talk a populist game, for heaven's sakes, crazy. Anyway. Will Lydia ever become a Republican? Probably not. I don't know. I'm just using her for an example. But are there people who are open-minded enough to say, yeah, okay. Because here's Lydia. She owns a firearm, not a Trumpster. I mean, not, I'm speaking on her behalf. But she just said something that's important to hear. She said two things. I had a friend who set up an appointment to get tested. It was taking too long. He left and got a letter in the mail. It was positive. So Lydia right now knows that freaking this whole thing's a joke. Just by that alone. She sees it with her very eyes. This whole thing is stupid. And then she said about Obamacare. Uh, 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 well, she said something about something, about Obamacare. Anyway, uh, Obamacare, duh, duh, we have doctors sucking Obamacare, surgeons sucking Obamacare. Check this out. This is pretty cool. So there's JD, Jill, tearing people up right on. Yeah, green will be deflationary. I completely agree. With that. Actually, I do want to talk about that. I, I think that's 100% right on, too. It'll be deflationary, uh, green, because there's, because people are going to be doing less. <laughs> because the, the, people are going to be doing less because the price of energy is so high. Uh, uh, Joe Rogan. <laughs> Joe Rogan and Chuck Norris died at least 20 times. But, oh, my goodness. Wait, wait. New York Times is now calling North Carolina for Biden? No. I thought they. I thought this already been called for friggin' the Trumpster. I know Tom Tillis was already called for. So there we go. My mom came to Citizen State and in her packet was a letter signed by Trump. That's awesome, man. That is awesome. All right. When will the Georgia be? I ah, man, no idea. When will Georgia be finalized? No idea. They just said they're past the tipping point on climate change. No go back right now. Uh, Obamacare doesn't have good doctors. That's what I'm saying. Dude, that's scary, man. The 18th, who knows? Who knows? All right. Lydia seems fair. I think that's right, uh, Dan. I think it takes guts to to hang tight with a with a peanut gallery that we have. Who I love, I love it. This is a back and forth. Never hurt anybody. Where's your parlor account? So let's go there. We'll go to parlor and then we'll call it a night. 
I like doing live streams. I just, I don't know why I enjoy that. I enjoy the back and forth where I get to talk mostly. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Oops. But it's fun. So I like doing them in the, it's fun for me, which makes me kind of weird. All right. So parlor is right there. So uh, someone who asked that I am at, at, uh, you got to do the at sign, Scanlon, at Scanlon, and that's me. You can find me right there. Still figuring this parlor thing out. Um, another Black Child Murder in Atlanta, BLM Crickets. I did that video on YouTube today. Uh, this post got me, this is my blog. This post got me banned from Bogleheads. Uh, there's my man, Dan uh, uh, Bongino, who talked about New York Times saying there is no fraud. And I said, this is from the same people who said that Russia Gate was a thing. All right, my friends, um, let's just get back on here real quick. Oops, hold on a second. I got to get back there. Stop share. Maybe so uh, at Scanlon is parlor. So jump on, join me over there for sure. Uh, big hugs to your mom, Linda. Uh, freaking, freaking awesome, man. Big hugs. That is that is for sure. Um, <laughs> exactly. Just from how Chinese do financial reporting, you never want to buy stocks. Yeah, man. Right on. Dogface Banff. I'm not sure what Banff means. Dogface looks like Georgia. Uh, and it's fun to chat once in a while in the chat. Well, I agree, man. It's fun to jump on here and shoot the, shoot the, the Pablo's excrement. Appreciate y'all being here. We'll see you on Sunday night. My wife and I are going to Blue Ridge tomorrow for some lunch with old Fritz. Remember Fritz from um, Fritz Gilbert? Uh Remember old Fritz Gilbert, uh, he, he, his wife, Jackie, and I are going out to eat some lunch tomorrow. I'm going to show my wife around Blue Ridge and maybe can convince that ball and chain that we should get the hell out of Fulton County while we can. All right. So, you guys, thank you all for being here. Much obliged. Join me on Parlor. If you have Parlor things and you want to uh, me to join you, I'm happy to do so, too. Just let me know. Thanks again.